Well, what do you I guess we'll go ahead. Let's go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, we'll go ahead and get started. Just a quick introduction. My name is Gilberto Taide. I'm the Director of Operations for the Greater North Texas Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Of course, we have our, our Madam Chair, Asela Garrett, and uh, other board members and representatives are on the call. We also have a few uh, members. And I am excited because we're kicking off a series of um, videos that will introduce um, our membership into procurement and uh, in contracting. And this is a great way to help out your business. Um, Ms. Alvarez it has been our point of contact for the SBA. And I'll give you a little bit of background on, on Nancy Alvarez. So since 2011, Nancy has served as the head of the business development program of the Women's Business Representative for the US Small Business Administration and the Dallas Fort Worth District Office. She's been instrumental in providing leadership, management, and oversight to optimize the deployment of the SBA's federal contracting program to the small business communities within a 72 county geographical area in the North Texas in Spanish and in English. Uh, she is a champion for women and disadvantaged businesses in the federal marketplace. And she's been playing an important role in increasing the participation of small businesses in the federal contracting programs and advocating strongly for the inclusion and participation of small businesses and government procurement. Nancy graduated from Jacksonville University with a bachelor's degree in business administration. She was actually a magna cum laude. Uh, she is currently an advisory board member of the D uh, Dallas Fort Worth Federal Agency Small Business Advocacy Council, a small businesses professional forum where federal agencies share, gather, and create ideas that promotes small businesses' interests and participation in the federal marketplace. So we are excited to have you, Nancy. And I am so happy to be here. I, I want to thank you, certainly, for uh, chatting with me and, and letting me know exactly what the membership probably wanted to hear about the SBA, and I'm just delighted to be here. And I also wanted to thank uh, Madam Chairman uh, for also, uh, you know, having me here uh, with your membership. So thank you so much for having me. No, thank you. Thank you. And uh, if you'd like, we can go ahead and, and kind of get started. Okay. Very good. Let's get my presentation up and running here. Let's share. Kind of minute. It's making sure that I could bring this up if I can. Every once in a while, I encounter um, technical difficulties, so bear with me here. No worries, it happens. I'm not getting. <laughs> I'm not getting the share. Okay, here it is. Here it is. Okay, there you go. Screen one. All right. Now you can see my screen, right? We can see it. SBA. Very good. Okay. Awesome. Well. Again, thank you so much for having me. Um, today, we're going to be talking about market research. And as I was telling Gilberto earlier, um, you know, I tailored this presentation specifically for your membership um, so that you can explore a little bit of federal marketplace potentially as a growth strategy for your business. So um, there's a lot more information to cover. I just really curtailed the presentation for one hour but I'm gonna talk about the resources available. So if after the presentation you need more information, you're more than welcome to call me um, or certainly any other resources that um, work with the SVA. So let's get started here. Most important thing about uh, doing business or exploring about doing business with the federal, uh, federal government is understanding the market, right? What are we talking about? Um, what does this federal market present and why would I wanna do business with the federal government? Well. The most important thing is that the government is considered to be the largest buyer of goods and services. Um, we purchase over $600 billion a year and the government's procurement policy, which encourages prime and subcontracting opportunities for small business is a catalyst for economic growth. Federal statutes define government wide prime contracting goals, which represent a primary tool in helping small businesses be considered for government contracts. The current government-wide procurement goal is at least 23% of all federal contracting dollars, meaning 23% has to be reserved to do business strictly with small businesses. Um, three methods of purchasing are full and open competition, 
the small business set aside, which I'll talk a little bit about in the strategy, um, including uh, certifications based on socioeconomic categories and certainly sole source. The government is important to small business. Number one, it procures more than $600 billion annually and has a goal, again, as I said earlier, of 23% um, reservation of contract for small businesses. Um, reservations of contract uh, above 5,000 but below 250,000 are automatically reserved for small businesses. Also, the government buys almost any product and service uh, imaginable. So you know, I remember making the mistake one time of saying something that I thought the government didn't buy and, and I was proven wrong. So after that instance, I never say the government doesn't buy it. We just say, let's research and let's see what <laughs> the, the results yield. Um, also, the government advertises its needs well in advance. Um, it specifies clearly its purchasing uh, ground rules and has many government agencies and programs available to help small businesses. Also, the government utilizes credit card purchasing um, and all the, also you can, uh, they also purchase under simplified acquisition. Also, it gives non-competitive as well as limited competition advantages to selected businesses. It rewards large businesses for working with small businesses and it consistently spends and pays its bill usually within 30 days and often electronically. So we wanna talk a little bit about that um, and how you get set up for that and what kind of purchases the government buys at those levels. So it is a policy of the federal government to maximize um, to the extent practical, okay? The inclusion of small businesses uh, in federal contracting. So they set these goals at 23%, which was one I highlighted earlier. That's our largest procurement goal, federally mandated 23% reserved for small business. There is a small disadvantage business goal, which includes the 8A business development program. That goal was 5% and under the Biden administration, it just got increased to 11%. And his goal is to increase it to 15% by 2025. So that's some gains right there for this group of individuals that um, want to certify themselves uh, as a, um, or want to apply for the uh, small disadvantaged business certification. There's also a 5% for women-owned small businesses, a 3% for HUBZone, and a 3% for service-disabled veteran-owned small business. There is no statutory goal for veteran-owned small business, but there is um, participation from veteran owners uh, in doing business with the Veterans Administration. So if you're interested in that, uh, stay tuned. We're also preparing to take over the small business certification or the verification actually from the VA because you know SBA does have um, the authority over the uh, small disadvantage or the service disabled veteran on certification. However, it's always been self-certifying, but now SBA is going to take over that and we're gonna make it a um, where SBA certifies the businesses just like they recently did with the women on small business certification. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the importance of certification and how you can incorporate certifications into your um, strategy. Before we move on to that, let's talk about this little graph that highlights um, the accomplishments of the federal government. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about, you know, again, how you incorporate the market research you're gonna do with the social economic categories and the procurement goals. What's important here is um, to help you understand this line up here, the solid light blue line represents what SBA, what, I'm sorry, what small businesses have been able to accomplish over the past few years. The blue marks the uh, small, small business um, contracts or the contracts that have been awarded to small business, let me put it that way. The gray represents the total eligible dollars, meaning this is what small businesses could have been awarded, although we only awarded the, the blue. So this shows really the, the, the extent of which, you know, small businesses can really maximize their small business status and doing business with the federal government. And so the red line here across the board represents that 23% that we are, you know, that the government set aside in terms of accomplishments, right? So you can see that over, 
the year 18, 2019, and 20, we were able to exceed that. But again, we still negotiate the goals at higher level, but the statutory, the, the, the percentage required by law is 24%. Again, the SBA is the agency responsible for negotiating these goals with the federal agency, and we are always negotiating those goals above that limit. So again, this is what we've been able to accomplish in terms of small business. Notice, okay, where we are in terms of percentages of dollars, and there's still opportunities here. So let me highlight really quickly some of the major accomplishments. So the federal government exceeded the small business contracting goal for eight consecutive years. That's awesome because we've been working hard to try to achieve that. Um, it's awarded a record-breaking $145.7 billion in prime contracts to small business. Let me emphasize the importance of this. We're not talking about set aside where you know, we are awarding subcontracts to small business. We're talking about you, the small business, being the prime contractor. And that's significant because if you do business at the local level, the gov uh, local government level, mostly what you're going to find is that they haven't been able to establish a set aside, a true set aside program. So they have goals where their primes are responsible for ensuring that they award uh, contracts, subcontracts to small business. And so we know what happens. There's nothing wrong with that, but you end up getting a lot less profits. And so that's the reason why we have these set aside programs so that you're getting the maximum profits when you're doing business with the federal government. Um, another achievement here is that 26.1% of all federal small business eligible dollars were awarded to small businesses. And over 69,000 small business prime contractors received contracts averaging $2.1 million per award. And I think that's significant. And we continue uh, to increase those uh, averaging uh, contracting dollars. So we wanna make sure that small businesses can succeed. So what do you do if you're thinking about um, doing business with the federal government? That's the first thing you wanna do is first of all, you wanna understand, you wanna do a self-assessment to make sure that you are prepared to do business with the federal government. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that and what are you gonna look at? I'm gonna send to, um, uh, Gilbert, the the um, worksheet that I get, that I hand out, and you can go through the questions to kind of determine, do a self assessment of yourself. I do have a what I call a cheat sheet, and I'm going to forward that to you, and you can certainly share with the membership. But we're going to look when you are trying to analyze yourself. You're going to use a few tools. The first thing is you're going to ask yourself a couple of questions. The first thing you want to do is you want to define. Um, your parameters, your, your contract value. What kind of contract values am I going to try to pursue? Do I have a geographical limitation? You know, the government buys all over the world. We, uh, we acquire goods and services for all over the world. We have bases in Germany. I mean, like I said, all over the world. So we have to provide um, products and services to those agencies that are overseas. So you might be involved in doing business with the federal government and providing goods and services, not only nationwide, but we can go uh, worldwide. So again, this depends on you and it's important for you to set your parameters. What are you willing, how far are you willing to go? And you know that's gonna depend on financially, how sound is a company to be able to handle a contract overseas. You also wanna determine your financial capacity to perform on a federal contract. And this is really going to involve three things, really thinking about whether you're a product or labor intense business, um, what's the largest contract that you have performed on, and can you finance this contract for two months? And the reason behind these questions is really to determine what type of contract levels you're going to pursue, right? You want to make sure that you don't want to, you don't want to bite more than what you can handle. So look at, first of all, whether you are a labor intense company or you're product intense. If you're labor intense, you know that if you're performing on a contract, you have employees to pay, you're probably paying them on a weekly or bi-weekly basis, right? And if you're new to federal contracts, there might be a learning curve for you in terms of submitting an invoice to the federal government and getting paid. 
And while you learn that process, it might be a month, it might be two months before you actually get it right. There's gonna be some communication between you and the government in terms of submitting the invoice in the correct manner before they're able to pay you. In the meantime, if you're labor intense, you gotta pay your employees. So you have to have either a, a, a line of credit, um, you have to have some working capital to be able to pay your employees because if you don't pay your employees um, while you're still waiting for the government to pay you, your employees are going to walk and you're going to end up defaulting on a federal contract. And you don't want to do that because you'll be debarred from doing business with the federal government. Um, so it's important for you to, to do this self-assessment. If your product intends, you probably have an agreement with your suppliers of a 30-day net. And if the government delays paying you for whatever reason, because you didn't build them right, or you know they're having some questions on the product you provided because it didn't meet specs, whatever, you can at least negotiate some additional terms with your supplier. That is possible, okay? Um, so again, look at the, the largest contract that you've been able to perform and think of whether or not you have the, the capital, the working capital to sustain that contract for at least a month or two. OK, and, and that gives you a better position in terms of identifying, you know, what kind of contract values you're going to pursue. Determine your technical capacity to perform on federal contracts. You know, when you go at it, um, depending on the type of contract you're pursuing, certainly your industry, you might need property, materials, equipment, and certainly sometimes employees. There are people that they are one land shop. They start from home and they're them and themselves. So if that's your situation, then you got to limit what contracts you're going to pursue because you have to make sure that you you have the, you know, the property materials, equipment and employees. You also have to make sure that you have the required license and permits. And most importantly, you know, this is like when you get out of college, you might have a diploma, but everybody's looking for, you know, your experience. So let's hear it like in, 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 in an economic environment like today, right, where everybody's looking for employees. Um, and, you know, if you probably don't have experience, it's not going to matter. They're probably going to hire you. But the federal government is no different. You know, they want to see that you have past performance. So if you don't have past performance, we have tools and techniques that you can implement to gain that. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. OK, so that's part of the self-assessment. You can also take advantage of doing what's called a SWOT analysis. And SWOT stands for Strength, Weakness, Opportunity, and Threats. And it's the framework used um, to evaluate a company's competitive decision and to develop um, strategic planning. So SWOT analyzes and, and assess the internal and external factors of a company uh, in moving forward in crafting a strategy. In terms of the strength, um, strength describes what an organization excels at, and what separates it from its competitors, um, like for example, a strong brand, loyal customer base, et cetera. There's a couple of questions up here that I added that you can certainly you know, ask yourself in trying to identify your strengths. As far as your weakness, what well, weaknesses stop an organization from performing at its optimum level? They are areas where the business needs to improve to remain competitive. And certainly I also added, again, some questions that you can ask yourself, and these are not, you know, these are not the only questions. Um, we have uh, multiple resources available that you can um, sit down and, and do consultation, uh, and they can come up with some additional questions. Again, the strength and weakness are going to look more at the internal aspect of the business, okay, where um, the opportunities and threats are going to look more uh, uh, at external at the external environment. So for example, for opportunities, the opportunities refers to uh, favorable external factors that could give an organization a competitive advantage, whereas threats um, refer to factors that have the potential to harm an organization like changing regulations in your industry and things of that nature. So it's important for you to Use this as a tool to craft your market research as well. And we're, you're going to see why. Okay. So, in order to bid on and win government contracts, you have to sell products or services that the government buys and at a competitive price. 
And the reason why this is so important is because I've had companies that go and pursue doing business with the federal government without doing any kind of market research. And it takes them years to be able to identify a niche in the federal government. So we're gonna bypass all that. I'm gonna show you the steps that you should be taking to do a market research in the federal marketplace and determine whether you know doing business with the government is something that you wanna do. The first thing that we are gonna look at is know what agencies buy your products and services. I mean, this is key, right? If we don't know who buys and sells, we're just going to go out there and take a shotgun approach and we're going to waste our resources, which, you know, small businesses usually have limited resources. So I put together a few tools that you can use um, to access and do your market research. And the first one is called the Federal Procurement Database System. And I actually have the website here for you. Um, you can do a search using NAICS, and NAICS stands for North American Industrial Classification System. It's a, it's a system of codes which tells the federal government the industry you're in. SBA is responsible for developing the size standard and coming up with a size standard for each industry. Okay, you, you're gonna look at size when you're ready to bid on a contract, Primarily, we're going to bid on a contract as a small business because you don't want to compete full and open. Remember, at the beginning, I talked about the ways in which the government announces and it said full and open. Full and open says that you're competing with everyone and you don't want to put yourself in that position because you're going to be at a disadvantage. So you want to potentially get certified as a small business at a minimum or look at some of the other certifications. But right now, we're looking at the market research. So again, you can do a keyword search. I don't recommend keywords because when you do a keyword search and we're gonna look at what this is gonna look at, okay? Um, you're gonna come up with names of contractors. Uh, if you're looking, for example, who buys my product and your product is, um, let's say, um, design, right? You probably gonna come up with, if you use the keyword search, with companies that have the design word in them and nothing having to do with the services that you provide. So it's better to use NAICS codes and kind of continue to break down from there, okay? You can use also the USA Spending website, and here's the website as well. And the USA Spending draws its information from the Federal Procurement Database System. So you say, well, why should I use it? Well, to tell you the honest truth, USA does a great job, USA Spending does a great job in reflecting this raw data in FPDS into graphs, where you're able to see potentially geographically where most of the work is coming from for that agency, for example. Um, so again, visually, it gives you a good idea of you know, the information you're trying to search for in a more visually appealing way. And then lastly, we're gonna look at um, SAM. You can take a look at the system for ward management. You can do a search by NAICS and you can also do a, a key search by word. And, and you know, the keyword here works a lot better than FPDF, but SAM is anyway a combination of different systems. But um, the main system that I'm asking you to look at when you're doing your market research is those opportunities that are coming up so that you can kind of have an idea, potentially what might be coming up and what locations, where does the work need to be performed or what agency is soliciting this kind of opportunities, okay? So again, this is gonna give you the, the big picture. Um, the next step, and again, um, I'm gonna show you um, how the website, how the report is gonna look at and how you're gonna use that report, okay? But our next step after that is going to be to find your niche. Um, you know, competition is fear in the federal government. It's no different than anywhere else. And the federal government is making it easier for small businesses to uh, gain access to federal contracting opportunities by reserving opportunities for small business where you're only competing with other small businesses. You're not competing with large businesses. And so in doing that, this is what the report is going to look like. When you use that PDF, this is what it's going to look like. So this box right here on the left-hand side, we're going to go more into detail what that tells you. But this is where you're going to see the listing of agencies 
the the listing of, of, of departments underneath the main agencies. And you're also gonna see um, prime contractors doing business with those agencies. In the middle, you're gonna see the contract information. It's gonna give you the type of award, the number of award that you can research. This will not give you information on what the pricing was, but it will give you the total actions obligated, meaning what was the total awarded under this contract, right? The agency, the awarded it, a department or division below the agency. Um, it can also gives you information on the contractor that got awarded the contract. What it's not going to give you is the pricing that the contractor gave you, and for obvious reasons. Um, but sometimes some of the information that you might need, like pricing, might be releasable under the Freedom of Information Act. So you can craft up a, a letter requesting under the Freedom of Information Act some information in the contract. Um, if the agency uh, can give you that information, they will give it to you under the Freedom of Information Act. If not, they will let you know why they can't give it to you. But it's an additional thing that you can do if you're lost in terms of how much you might want to bid that contract for or something like that. Um, and lastly, I just want to highlight this area right here. And what I like to do with this data is really download it into an Excel spreadsheet where you can filter the information and kind of do a report based on, on your interest. So how do you use this report is, as you can see, I entered a next code at the top, and this is not the main screen, um, but this is what the results that will yield. And just a reminder what next code you reported. And then I'll give you here on the top left, and this is what I want you to look at, the top 10 agencies. And what I would encourage you to do is to um, identify the top three. And then within the top three, you wanna know, for example, for Department of Defense, because Department of Defense is huge. As you can see here, they have over 621,000 um, departments ordering under Department of Defense. You wanna break down. Who within Department of Defense do I wanna target? Well. The top three within Department of Defense are going to be the Army, uh, the public buildings, um, I'm sorry, it, it would be the Army, the public uh, building services, um, and the Navy would probably be the three main ones. So again, the key here is to, again, narrow who's buying your product or service and continue to narrow down to where the place of performance is because if in your original assessment, you said, I don't wanna move from the DFW area, you might be limited, but you're gonna be able to see this in this report, right? Cause it's gonna show you place of performance. Um, in some areas you might not need to do the work locally, right? You can do the work from your home or from your office, um, but the delivery of that service or product might be somewhere else and it might be doable for you as a small business. So again, this market research again, is just to make sure that you're staying within the parameters you set originally when you um, did your self-assessment. The next step would be to understand areas of government spending. Again, when you're looking at these reports, if you have an area where the government, you're providing a product or service and that's what you would like to do, but you have another product or service that you can provide, but you don't do a lot of business in that area and you'll find that the government is buying a lot of it or has the need for it, then by all means, you know, diversify your product and, and service, um, add that to your um, strategic plan and pursue that. It's just gonna depend what the results of the report are going to yield in terms of whether there's a market for you or, you know, the government spending is in other areas where you might be able to benefit from. So when looking at government spending, again, you can look at the SAM. And SAM uh, has, again, I said, different systems incorporated into it. And you can do different searches when you click here in the middle. But what I want you to look at is all award data. So you can look at all award data by using a keyword or using the NAICS code. You can also look at the opportunities. You can change here this, um, this uh, selection to opportunities. And you could put again the NAICS or the keyword, and it's gonna give you opportunities that the government is currently soliciting, things that the government wanna acquire. 
uh, that they want to buy. So it gives you some perspective in terms of what's out there. Is it being reserved for small business? Is it full and open? Um, what's the contract value? Again, because based on your parameters, you might not want to pursue that opportunity if with sway over what you estimated that you can handle. Okay, so that's how you use the system for award management. Also, anyone wanting to do business with the federal government, the first step is to register in this database. And this database is free of charge, but you're going to incorporate in here your information on your bank because you're going to be paid electronically and it's all linked to this website. Okay. So we're going back to that FPDS report I talked about. And so you can see here, because the other step in this market research is you need to know your competition and their contracts, right? Because they might be performing on a contract that you might want to pursue in the future. So for example, if this is the, if you're in an industry where you do um, janitorial services or what's called facility support services, these contracts are ongoing. But when the government awards them, they award them like on a on the basis of let's say five years. Um, and so when it comes back for renewal, you want to be prepared by understanding who your competitor, who's holding it, right? And positioning yourself and marketing yourself to this federal agency in a way where you're bringing <coughs> more than the current incumbent has. Okay, so that's another way to um, utilize this information. So once you see who your competitors are, then your responsibility is to go here, find that information to the point that you have and identify who the vendor is. Um, again, you're going to get a lot of information like their DUNS number, um, some information that you can actually research more this company outside of the government's website, like LinkedIn, their own website where you can gain a lot of information on that company, okay, to better position yourself. Once we've done that, we want to incorporate small business certification into your strategic marketing plan. And I'm going to, I'm going to share with you uh, something that you can use. So SBA is the agency responsible for uh, auditing or keeping track of the accomplishments of the agencies. And we generate what's called a scorecard. It's like a grading system, right? Where you're evaluating how well they did or they were able to meet the statutory goals. Remember we talked about earlier, it was 23% for small business, 5% for women owned, et cetera, et cetera. So this is an old uh, slide that I have here, but you should see the most current one, at least 2021 reflected. And it's done by major federal agencies. We do one on the government wide, but we also do one on the agency. So those agencies that you identified, the three top ones that I told you to identify, go back and look at how well they're performing, okay? In order to craft a uh, marketing strategy. Look here, for example, in this one, we were able to determine that, you know, they are exceeding the small business goal. They're doing good and in increasing their outreach and awards to the small disadvantaged businesses but they are decreasing in the number of awards to women owned and hub zone. So potentially this might be a good growth strategy for you. Why? Because it might be that the agencies are not identifying women in that particular industry, okay? With this agency or hub zone firms. And I know that hub zone went through a redistricting not too long ago and, and uh, there's been some changes to the hub zone program and, and that limit the pool of certified hub zones. So, you know, you might want to look into getting certified as a WSB or hub zone. Okay, again, I said at a minimum, you can get certified as a small business um, because you'll gain access to small business set aside and you won't be competing with uh, large businesses. So again, this is the way that you kind of incorporate small business certification into your growth strategy. Um, this line, I'm not going to go over, it's pretty intense, but I just want to give you an idea how hard the government is working and trying to achieve their goals. As I mentioned earlier, the Biden administration increased the 5% small disadvantage goal to 11%. And so um, now the um, OFPP and SBA have published some strategies trying to help them identify strategies, how they can identify small businesses and award contracting opportunities to small businesses. So 
I'm showing this to show you that the, the effort is intense. It's, it's to, to try to find um, small businesses uh, and making sure that small businesses can compete in the federal marketplace and the agencies don't have as an excuse, well, I can't find small businesses to do the work. Um, so again, we're putting different strategies for them on how they can identify small businesses. Okay. Now, once you've crafted your strategy and you know that you want to do business with the federal government and who, then you want to think about finding the opportunities, right? Where do I find them? Um, so one of the things is that every day the government publishes hundreds of requests for quotations, invitation for bid requests for proposals, uh, contracting personnel may use different methods to promote com uh, competition and identify potential vendors. Among the most common methods used is um, what's called micro purchase threshold. So um, below the micro uh, purchase threshold, which is 5,000 for Department of Defense agencies and 10,000 for civilian employee uh, for civilian agencies um, for purchases under the micro purchase threshold. Buyers will usually order directly from a vendor that they um, know or identify through the system for award management or what's called the dynamic small business search or other commercial websites. The dynamic small business search is SBA's um, website where we list small businesses, but you have to register in SIMS in order to, for your profile to transfer over to SBA small business dynamic search. Um, there are um, uh, indications that most government procurement transactions are micro-purchased through credit cards. So it's important that you um, accept credit cards if you want to do purchases at the micro-purchase uh, level. So micro-purchases may be awarded throughout soliciting competitive quotations. If the contracting officer or individual appointed considers the price to be reasonable. Um, such purchases must be distributed equally among qualified suppliers. So again, qualified small businesses. Um, you can tap into this market by number one, maintaining um, your profile in SAM and the dynamic small business search up to date and um, in, in, in complete. It has to be complete in order for you to be identified through these agencies. Number two, you wanna have the proper presence on the internet, so make sure that you have a LinkedIn account because the federal government is now using LinkedIn to look for contractors besides using the SAM and dynamic small business search. Identify the government credit card holder in your target agencies and market directly to them. And this is very important at this level because a lot of the purchases at the lower level, like the micro purchases are not gonna be announced in SAM. You have to market directly to the federal agencies. For purchases above the micro purchase threshold, but below the 25,000 buyers, or in this case, government agencies are required to solicit competitive quotations um, for purchases in this range. Uh, the most common instrument that they will use is a request for quotation or better known as an RFQ for commercially available or non-complex products or services. Okay, buyers may post their requirements on their agency's website and email the RFQs directly to vendors that they have identified through, again, SAM, the Dynamic Small Business Search, or other commercial um, websites. To identify who's buying under the 25,000, um, you're going to have to do a little research like we spoke. You can use FPDF, the Federal Procurement Database System, or you can use SAM. Um, they're both excellent resources. Uh, from there, you can generate the reports um, to find out what agency is buying what you have to offer, your product or service. And after that, all you need to do is start knocking on the doors for this dollar range um, purchases. So let's look at our next one. There are other sources too that you can use. You can use fedbid.com. Um, Unison is a privately held company that provides an online marketplace for the government. Uh, Fedbid charges no subscription fee to the sellers. Uh, in, uh, if uh, interested sellers simply register, they log in and they submit their bid for buys that correspond with their offering. Uh, the system adds an equal percentage transaction fee to the sellers. Um, bid prior to the submission of the solicitation to the buyer. 
And then when the buyer makes an award to the seller, then Fed bid will collect the included fee from the seller. So the buyer, the small business never gets to pay a fee and they don't even have to uh, pay a subscription fee for this service. Um, another thing and another way to access government contracting opportunities is subcontracting opportunities, which are a great way for small businesses, especially for those not ready to bid as prime contractors. Experience gained from subcontracting opportunities with the federal prime contractor can better prepare small businesses to bid on prime contracts in the future. Um, there's also Subnet, which is a database kept by the SBA of subcontracting opportunities posted by large prime contractors looking to do business with small businesses that can serve as subcontractors. The SBA maintains a directory of federal uh, government procurement prime contractors uh, with subcontracting plans in place. And I've added a link to the slide that will take you directly to uh, that uh, directory that you can look at. The next um, source is the GSA subcontracting directory. And GSA also publishes a subcontracting directory for small businesses that are looking to subcontract opportunities um, with prime contractors. The directory lists large business prime contractors that are required to establish a plan and a goal for subcontracting with small business. And again, I included the link um, to their site. Uh, let's see. Um, our uh, next one is going to be a DOD prime contractor directory. And the DOD prime contractor directory identifies large prime contractors that are required to establish a subcontracting plan with goals. The list includes company's name, prime contractor's number, contract period of performance, the NAICS code, the company's point of contact, the point of contact's phone number, email address, all the information you're gonna need to get a hold of the company. You can use this directory to find the contact information of prime contractors for potential subcontracting opportunities. And I also included the link there. Lastly, we have the opportunity forecast. And this is where agencies will post their opportunities within the next coming year. It's kind of like a wish list, right? So you have access to understanding what the government intends to buy. Not that it might uh, come to fruition, but if the funds are available, they might end up uh, awarding the contract. And so you'll see that it'll say when uh, it's going to be awarded. Um, and it's a great source for you in terms of trying to project what you want to pursue in the government. So each government agency releases a procurement forecast that includes contracting opportunities for small business. You can review these agencies require procurement forecast to find out if there are agencies that are buying what you have to sell. And forecasting methodology varies by service and constitute the best estimate of each, meaning you know, there is no assurance that they're going to buy it, but there's a good indication. The forecast information is provided for planning purposes and is subjected to changes. Um, so again, there's going to be a link there that was going to take you to the agencies that have forecasts. You can certainly look for those agencies based on, again, on your research. Lastly, we have the contracting guide on our website that it gives you all the information I just discussed with you today. And in addition, you can get some additional information like the certifications, the eligibility criteria for the certifications where to apply. We also locally do a certification workshop the first Wednesday of every month from 10 to 12. You can find that workshop announced on the event right. You can also register for our newsletter at sba.gov forward slash updates and register for the newsletter and we'll let you know when those workshops are coming up. But again, the contracting guide can be found on this website right here. And again, you'll find a lot of useful information, including a lot of the information that I just shared with you. So our main website is www.spa.gov. And lastly, before we take any questions, I wanna remind you and ask you, um, we are interested in knowing how well we're doing, where we can improve, if there's any kind of service or topic that we are not discussing that we might be covering to assist small business. 
Um, it's a short survey, uh, and you can find that survey at www.sba.gov forward slash feedback, or you can scan this code and it will take you directly to the questionnaire. So Gilbert, I think I am ready to take on the questions if there are any. Absolutely. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, ask participants if you have a question, just raise your hand and on the raise your hand feature in Zoom and I will unmute you. Um, but I, I had a small question. Um, what, what are the biggest pain points that you see um, when Hispanic business owners are, are looking into getting uh, contracted? OK, what you said, what is the biggest challenge? Yeah, challenge or pain points that you see. Okay, yeah, so yeah, most of the time what I find with the small business community, primarily Hispanics is, uh, you know, that, that they're not aware of the resources that the SBA has to support them. Um, you know, sometimes there is a language barrier and while I'm a big advocate always to doing these workshops in Spanish because, you know, Spanish for us is sometimes the way we understand difficult uh, subjects like, you know, the world of business. Uh, there's a lot to the world of business. And so, um, you know, we want to make sure that uh, the Hispanic community knows, number one, that there are resources that we have available that speak their language. Uh, and again, a lot of them shy away from this kind of opportunities because, number one, they're afraid of not being able to find the information in, in, in the way that they can understand it in their own language. Um, or otherwise, you know, they find that the market is difficult because they don't know where to find the uh, information or the resources that can help them kind of cross that line and jump into federal contracting opportunities. That makes sense. I, I will add in that as a, as a member of, of our chamber, if you, at any point you just want to schedule a call with me and, and you say, hey, I, I just need to talk this out a little bit, feel free to do so just by going to our website, gntacc.org. And you can schedule a, a, an appointment um, at the available times there. But Nancy, this has been amazing. I, I hope a lot of people will take advantage of this because um, even just the fact that the SBA is going from 5% to 11% and, and to try to increase that goal is just uh, amazing, right? It is. It is. And it's a major accomplishment. Like I said, some of these programs really put you in the forefront of government contracting because you're not competing with large businesses. You're just competing with other small business and talking about strategy. You know, if you don't have the experience, we have the tools. We can talk. We can help small businesses, for example, get into a joint venture agreement. We talk to them what the joint venture agreement does, where you can find another small business to partner with that will complement your products and services to pursue these larger contracts. That's a great strategy for you. Uh, and the good thing is that because these are implemented by the SBA, the federal agencies see these joint ventures as one entity. So the capabilities of both of them are combined. Again, just great tools um, that, you know, I haven't even scratched the surface in this presentation uh, to help small businesses just get a foothold in, in the federal marketplace. That's awesome. Well, I, I definitely appreciate it. I'll, uh, I'm looking at my uh, participants to see if there's any questions. You can also feel free to put them in the chat, uh, but I don't see any at the moment. Um, Gilberto, okay. I, I don't know how to raise my hand, but um, okay. I, would just, I would just really like to thank uh, Ms. Alvarez for this. Um, it may sound a little overwhelming right now if you've never um, even looked into doing business with the government. But let me assure you, uh, it all starts with getting certified. Get your certification, look into that first. And uh, I believe that we're gonna have some workshops on that as well, Gilberto, right? Absolutely. And so get, get your certification. And uh, as, you take, as you take that step, things are gonna get you know clearer and you'll figure it out because if I did, you can, <laughs> you can too. Very good, very good. That's awesome. We'll leave it to anybody else. No more questions. Well, if you guys think of, of a question later, because sometimes uh, it, it takes a little bit to absorb the information, um, I'm going to send out this information to all of our membership so you guys can have it readily available. Um, feel free to reach out uh, for anything. 
And, uh, and Nancy, thank you again for, for doing this for us. And we look forward to uh, working with you in the future as well. Yeah, definitely. Anything that I can do to assist your membership, more than welcome to contact me. Again, I will be sending to you the copy of the slide presentation, as well as the cheat sheet that I promise you so that they could start working on that. And if they get stuck anywhere, like I said, they could contact you and then you could contact me or you know you can refer them to me, whichever way is easier. I, I wanna wrap this up by, first of all, thanking everyone for joining us today. And also again, thanking the chamber for allowing the members and presenting these to the, to the, to the uh, membership because this is where it starts. You know, the, the chamber always brings great resources. Uh, and this partnership is designed exactly to that, to bring you, the small business community, the information that you need to succeed and grow your business. So again, thank you for having me. All thank right. you, thank you. All right, thank you guys. We'll close this out. Thank you, bye-bye. Bye-bye.